Hello everybody, my name is Music Is Our Friend and we're coming to you today from Santa Fe, New Mexico here at the Lensic as part of the New Mexico Jazz Festival. And I'm joined today by founding member of Tower of Power, a uh, legendary soul group from Oakland, uh, Mr. Emilio Castillo. It is an honor to be here with you, sir. Thank you, thank you so you. much. And uh, thank you for being on my channel. I really appreciate it. So you guys have a, a rich history coming here in New Mexico. And um, I've actually compiled some of the archives that you guys come in here. I don't know if you've seen this, no. but this is actually the very first time that you guys performed. It was in 1973 at Pacific Auditorium. And I'm gonna put it up so you guys can see it. But um, that is the first time that you guys were here. And I was wondering if you guys have any memories of that show by, by chance. I don't know that I have memories of that exact show. I remember the tour we did with Sylvester and the Hot Band. Really, how was that? It was, it was fabulous. It was a fabulous show. Fabulous. And we had a really great band. The hot band was really excellent. Great drummer, great guitar player. And then, uh, you know, uh, Sylvester, you know, a transvestite, you know, he'd come out in a, in a red sequin <laughs> gown, you know, and be singing and just, you know, really singing really, really high, you know, yeah. really soulful, you know. And then in the middle of the show, he'd pull off his wig and he'd go, oh, 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 oh yeah, you know. And you see all these people get stunned, you know. But they were a lot of fun. We, we flew with them, you know, and yeah. toured around them all day long. And oh, we had fantastic. a lot of fun with those guys. Oh, that's And fantastic. then Freddie King, you yeah. know, Freddie King had that song, I'm Going Down. Yeah. And that's where we really got the idea for the bass part on what it said. Because oh, wow. if you listen to I'm Going Down, it's boo doo 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 just like what it said, you know. We kind of, man, we take that. So that's fantastic. We used it when we wrote what it said. Well, what a tour, what a tour. And you guys have been uh, been touring for so long now. And uh, I actually went up to Red Rocks to see you guys up oh. at the Catch a Lettuce performance. How was that? What kind of preparation went into that? I know you guys rehearsed, I think, the night before in downtown Denver for that. Yeah, but we, we did the charts for, you know, a, a couple of months. Yeah. You know, um, my arranger, Dave Veskridge, who's down in San Antonio, uh, I, I, I created the set ahead of time. I said, this is the song we're going to do, and this is the order we're going to do them in. Yeah. And he wrote a symphony part for each of the songs. And uh, as he was writing, he would send me a little synthesizer demo of how it sounds yeah. with, with uh, a tape of us playing it live. Oh, and by nice. itself as well. Mm -hmm. And I'd, you know, listen to it. If I had anything I wanted added or something I didn't like, I'd let it go. And so we kind of just nursed the whole set along. It's a lot of work. A lot of work. You know, for him, especially, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, but we were, we knew the songs cold. You know, so we were prepared. But we had never played with the symphony. Yeah. You know, so we did one in San symphony Diego. gig in San Diego. And that was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But at Red Rocks, uh, that was one of the top five gigs of my life. Wow, that, yeah. that, was, that, that was, was that was an unbelievable yeah. night. And no, I was, it was stunning. It was an amazing yeah. night, and it was, I was there up front. Uh, my family went, we went up there for a road trip just to see you guys perform, yeah. and it was just an absolutely phenomenal performance, and not to mention Lettuce. Uh, when was the first time you heard about Lettuce? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> Lettuce, they kind of, you know, I know the drummer, mm -hmm. Adam, from uh, Average White Band. Mm -hmm. He was with them for a while, and he was a hot drummer. We knew he was going to go places, you know. He was always coming up to me and, you know, can I play a group, can I play this? And I was always, yeah, man, continue, keep doing that, you yeah. know. And then uh, I, I heard he was playing, I think, with uh, some famous guitar player. I can't remember. But And then uh, I didn't know about his band Lettuce. And I got contacted during the pandemic and said, oh, Adam, Adam from the group Lettuce would like you to listen to this track and maybe finish writing it. And I was like... I know this guy from Aaron Brennan, you know? <laughs> Yeah. And so he sent it to me, and for some reason, right off the bat, because uh, we had a bunch of dates booked, yeah. and we had the same manager. Okay. And uh, okay. so we were going to go on, and he was thinking, maybe you could write the song, and we'll play it together or something. And I was like, well, I don't know about that, but we'll, you know, I'll write the song. So I started writing it, and then I called Doc. I said, you know, just help me finish it. I got most of it done. We finished it up, sent it back to them. But then all those days got canceled, and, yeah. you know, the pandemic, and, and yeah. stuff fell apart, and uh, so uh, next thing I know, we got these symphony gigs with them, you know? and I really like playing with them, because they bring in a different crowd, you know, yeah. and, and I know I know them now, so they're really nice young guys, very talented, really good band. Exactly, yeah, and it, and it was interesting, because, you know, I was, I was there, 
and the people next to me were Grateful Dead fans. So it was like, you know, there's just such a wide diversity of, of people coming to see Lettuce, not only you guys as well. But you know, uh, Lettuce, Deadheads kind of dig that whole jam band thing. Exactly. Lettuce yeah. is right in that genre, which is where we want to go. We want to be able to play those kind of jam band festivals. So yeah. us playing with Lettuce is a good thing. But also, we're known to the Deadheads because we did that famous concert on New Year's Eve with them when we back at a James, right. you know. So yeah. and a lot of those Deadheads know about us. And we did other gigs with the Dead over the years. We did uh, an AIDS benefit at Oakland Coliseum. And, you know, I, I, yeah. we were on uh, Mickey Hart's solo album in like 1972. Oh, wow. Our horns, you know? Well, you, you guys were kind of like, because you guys were in Oakland and they were in San Francisco. So you guys kind of looked, you know, from afar at them, you know. Did you guys have any, ever any encounters with them? Or? The Dead? The, the Dead, yeah. Oh, yeah. All the time? Yeah, 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 plenty, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, because, you know, we, we were all under the Bill Graham umbrella. That's you know, what I was about to get into. Yeah, Bill Graham, you know, he was the biggest promoter what in was the he world. Like? Fabulous, mm -hmm. uh, unless you were on the wrong side of him. <laughs> you know, I, was, I was telling one of my guys the other day, you know, a, a story about one time he gave me $10,000. Mm -hmm. He had hired us to do this Christmas party. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came in, it was during a low part of my career, early 80s, and he said, you know, I know you guys are kind of, you know, going through it. I just want you to know I had a good roll of the dice this year. This is for you. He gave me an envelope of 10000 in cash. He said, you can keep it, you can share it with the guys, give half to the guy, whatever you want. It's your Christmas present, you know. And I, you know, I threw it on the pool table backstage when they got there. That's incredible. I said, this is Merry Christmas from Bill Graham. <laughs> but then, you know, I was telling that story to one of my guys the other day. They were, yeah, he must have been a great guy. I go, yeah, but then to know Bill Graham, you got to know the other side of it. You know, yeah, we used to go sure. in, we had a big fight with him early in our career because uh, we insulted him. It was our yeah. fault. Yeah. It wasn't his fault. You know? And we used to go in uh, every Monday when we were in town, me and Doc would go in and try to, you know, mend our fences. We'd go in and Bill, you know, we handled it completely wrong. We're really sorry. You know, we need to make a record. You know, we're <laughs> at the peak of our career and you got our contract and we don't know what to do, but we're just coming to you, you know, laying our heart down. And then you go, you know, boys, you know, I hear you, you know, and uh, I had the same sort of situation with Carlos Santana and I didn't have a contract, but I do with you. And, and he'd stand up and he'd be like, pointing like this. And I remember his office was uh, from about three feet up. It was all glass. Yeah. And, and out there was like, 16 girls, you know, at their oh own individual goodness. desks. And they'd see us come in, and they, they, they remember from the last week, you know, mm -hmm. and then they'd see us come in, and they're like, hi, guys, and then we go in and sit down and do our thing, and then he'd be yelling, and I'd look out, and all the girls would be out there watching us. You know. <laughs> and then, you know, after he got done yelling, he got it all out, and then we go, okay, Bill, see you next week. You know. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> such, such, such he a was uh, story. bigger than life. He was such a, uh, a monumental person uh, to you guys, and to the beginning. Of Tower of Power, really. Um, I, I kind of want to go back and ask you about, you know, how you met Doc. I know there was a story about how you went to meet him for uh, was it in Oregon, and he told you that uh, it needs a little bottom. No, I uh, we had a soul band called the Motowns. Yes, we were pretty tight, and we were opening uh, at the Alameda County Fair in Pleasanton, California, for a group called. Loading Zone, which was a, a band that played the Fillmore all the time. They were like a hippie soul band. They had a, an album out of RCA. You know, they were big, you know. We were like the little buddies that were opening up. And uh, they had a B3. And I was used to using a B3 at the uh, After Hours nightclub when we played every weekend. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to borrow it. You know, otherwise yeah. I had to play my bogus little box organ. You know? <laughs> so I, I asked them, I said, uh, you know, so you got a B3, do you yeah. mind if we use it with the opening act? And so a little while later, uh, they send Doc over. <laughs> Back then his name was Steve. Yeah, Steve Cooper. Steve Cooper. Yeah, so he comes up to me, you know, and uh, what kind of band you got? I go, uh, you got a soul band. I go, yeah? He goes, yeah, you ever heard of the Spiders? Because that was our, our idols, you know? Yeah. And he goes, yeah. He goes, they opened for the Loading Zone last week at Barry S. and kicked their ass. <laughs> I go, yeah, they're a good band. I go, so we're kind of like them. He goes, no, oh, you, you can use the organ. I go, all right. So then after the show, you know, we did good. You know, and he comes up to me and uh, he says, uh, you got a nice band. I go, thanks. You know, and he goes, uh, yeah, I only one thing wrong. I go, yeah, what's up? He says, your horn section, it needs a little bottom. That's right. <laughs> yeah. 
know, he waits a second and he goes, by the way, I play the baritone saxophone and I have a summer with a low A key. And, uh, you know, they had just, somewhere had just come up with these altos and tenors that had a high F sharp key. Yeah. And then about, I don't know, within a year, I heard that the baritone had come up with this extra low one. Instead of a low B flat, mm -hmm. it had a low A key. You know, mm -hmm. A on the baritone is concert C. You know, it's yeah. the tunes are in C. Yeah. You know? So it's valuable on the baritone sax. He told me that, you know, and he's just kind of quirky. I said, yeah, why don't you come by my house next week and we're going to do an audition. You know? <laughs> and the funny thing is, we had just made a decision. No more weird horn players. Because <laughs> we were looking for a trombone player. We wanted more bottom of Yeah. But we wanted a trombone. And we kept getting these guys from our high school. They were really square, you know. And we're trying to teach them steps and, you know, sing soul background parts. And they weren't getting it, you know. We finally said, look, we're tight. Let's leave it the way it is, you know. No more of these weird horn players. And I forgot to tell the guys that I invited them. Oh, my goodness. And he shows up at the rehearsal in Fremont, where I live with my parents. And uh, my dad had, um, we had a garage where we rehearsed, but he took the garage door out and he put in these two big doors. And for some reason, when they put them in, they messed them up and we could never open the doors. So we would always go through the window. There were two windows on the side and the, the, the window would go in, you know. So we're in there rehearsing and we hear somebody banging on the, on the door, you know. And we see this shadow, because there was like a, a yellow kind of plastic thing yeah. on the door. And we look, the guy goes, what's that? He goes, I don't know, I forgot, you know. And then, bang, bang, you know. And then I remember, oh, that, that very player, you know. And I go, uh, I go, go through the window. You know, and nothing happens. And he's banging on the door, I go, go through the window. You know, and, uh, Finally, I, I go to the window, I look, I go, you gotta come through the window. And he's got a baritone sax, you know. And the Doc's not real agile anyway, you know. Yeah. So he's trying to get through the window with the very sax. Oh know? my god. And he finally gets in, the guys are livid. They're like, what's this? You know, first day, we yeah. all that. You know, what's this? And I go, oh, I go, I met him at the fair last week. I told him, he could audition. I go, he plays the baritone sax, it has a low A key. And they're like, nah, we told you no more horn players. So uh, I go, well, we'll just get this out of the way. So I hold up the list. I go, you know, what can you play? He says, uh, well, I know Cold Sweat by James Brown. And I know Tell Mama. And I know Philly Dog. I go, all right, well, we'll start with Philly Dog. So it used to be ba da 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 ba ba you know. Now it's ba da 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 ba da ba ba da 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 ba da I see the guys. They're like, you know, and then we do... Uh, Cold sweat. It used to be. Yeah. Ba -da 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 -da. Now it's. Ba -da -da -da. Ba -da -da. You know, guys' eyes are getting bigger. You know. Yeah. Then we do Tell Mama. That was one of our big tunes. We had a James song, mm -hmm. and uh, it used to be Tell Mama. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. You know. So now it's Tell Mama. Da -da 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 -da. Ba -da 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 da -da 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 -da. Ba -da 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 <laughs> Their eyes are huge now. Yeah. And my dad walks in. And he goes, maybe come in the kitchen, I need to talk to you. Oh, no. He's like, I go in there, I go, yeah. what's up? He says, <laughs> hire this guy, he's got something. <laughs> and I go out and I look at the guy, they go, he's in the band. I go, yeah, yeah, just, he's in. Just like that. He Rehearsal was over. Just like that, he's your, he's your best friend. Yeah, I took him out for a cheeseburger, we've been best friends. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Um, you know, Doc is such a, a, a big part of the band. We call him the personality of the personality of the horn section yeah so i, I kind of want to get into kind of like your hobbies like when you're not on tour what do you do you like do you do golf are you do no you, golf no golfing do you that's for old people no, it, <laughs> what do you listen to what kind of music yeah what kind of music do you do oh, what kind of, i like you know soul music i mean do you like i mean you listen to your own obviously right a little well bit. Uh, I got re -mar remarried three years ago, and she likes to play my steps. So <laughs> I do hear it a lot more than I used to. But uh, sometimes I'm listening, I'm like, wow, I ain't heard that in a long time. Sounded pretty good, you know. But I listen to uh, classic soul music. Oh, I like great singers, mm -hmm. you know, and I like great songs, and I like great rhythm. And so that's how I pick my, my music. But I also, I'm a Christian now, and uh, I really oh, got into uh, gospel praise music. Like yes. Fred Hammond and uh, Smokey Norfolk and uh, oh, that's fantastic. you know uh, 
I, I dig all those gospel praise artists. I believe all the great singers went back to the church. Yeah. <laughs> and they're making some great music. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then I also, ironically, I became a fan, a big fan, of Allison Krauss and Union Station. Wow. And it's bluegrass with really hip vocals, you know. Yeah. And, but mm -hmm. I was up one night, late at night, up in Park City. I couldn't sleep. Turned on the TV and there was an Allison Cross and Union Station special on PBS. Mm -hmm. And I watched them and they floored me. Then I went to watch it's every CD that they had. Yeah. And then that got me into more blue country. <laughs> <laughs> I started listening to that, you know. It's like a lot of that wow. country music's really soulful, you know. So it's kind of just like for you, it's kind of just like this, just this endless discovery of just discovering, you know, music. You know, you're just constantly, you know. I think it's the same oh, for everybody. Uh, you're you're open-minded. People are addicted to music. Right? Yeah. You know, absolutely. And everybody's got their own taste and yeah. you know, their own way of getting it. I know with me, I, you know, I, I, I can listen to you know, jazz, I can listen to classic rock. Well, that's another thing. You know, I'm not a jazz guy. Yeah. Right? But, you know, the pandemic, everybody started watching a lot of uh, Netflix, right? Yeah. So I watch this uh, special on uh, Lee Morgan, mm -hmm. right? I never knew nothing about Lee Morgan. It floored me. I, I downloaded every Lee Morgan thing I could on Spotify the next day. <laughs> and I listen to that now, and I really enjoy it. Oh, so, that's fantastic. Yeah. So before the show, you're about to go on stage. What is going through your mind? Well, any pre-show rituals that you have? We all pray together. You all pray? Yeah, we started that's doing that in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. You know, I got sober in 1988. I, was a, I am a recovering alcoholic addict. And a year later, Doc got clean sober. And you know, we're going to meetings and getting connected with God, and pretty soon, Amen. you know, uh, one of my and I, and I had a I had a Muslim, I had an atheist, I had a Christian, and I had me. I was kind of somewhere in the middle there, just still exploring. And I saw two of them praying before the gig one night, and, uh, and I thought, well, that's cool, you know. And then the next day, I saw three of them over there. You know, and then the next night they saw me and they go, come here, you know. So we were praying, and then you know, within like a month or so, we were all praying together. That's you know? fantastic. And uh, I remember one night the atheist came to me and said, you know, I don't think I want to do these prayers. I go, yeah, you don't have to do them. It's just not mandatory. If you want to be with it, it's fine. You know. Yeah. He goes, oh, okay. You know. <laughs> and uh, but you know, now everybody's just fine with it. We all pray before we before we play and. And we also pray for each other when other stuff is going on. That's fantastic. Amen to that. Um, what is the what is the biggest story that you have in all these years of being in the business, in terms of uh, a fan, you know, coming to you like and saying, you know, you changed my life or, or you inspired me? What is? Do you have a big story? Any anyone that sticks out to you, kind of, that just? Well, I mean, there's been a lot. People come to me and tell me. I named my son Emilio. <laughs> I mean, you, you have no idea how you affected my life. And you know, yeah. even just today, I was having lunch with my friend Manny Anaya. Mm -hmm. He's a retired uh, Santa Fe policeman. And he was telling me, he used to have a band, and they were kind of like us, you know. And, yeah. and, uh, and he was talking about this young guy. He says, you don't know, man. He goes, this guy, I forget his name. He says, this guy, man, he goes, he was messed yeah. up, man. And he goes, I went and talked to him, and he was uh, I, I took him to see your concert, and uh, yeah. next thing I know, man, he's like on the straight and narrow, and he's doing good. Now he's that's got three kids and a couple of grandkids. You know, and I was like, man, that's great. He goes, you ever hear that? I go, yeah, I hear it all the time. Yeah. You know? yeah. it feels good. Yeah. You know? And that's that's incredible because you know, you know, coming out of you know the, obviously this pandemic, to me it seems like people resort to music now as sort of like a, like healing, you know, a, a, yeah. a, a, a method of, of healing. Have you seen that uh, in your live shows, like uh, more of an uptick of, of people coming to you and just telling you, you know, this is healing, this is rejuvenating for me? Well, I mean, after the pandemic, everybody yeah. was just like, you know, dying to for live a concert. And, Absolutely. And our fans are rabid fans. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're really diehard fans. Yeah. So, you know, they were just like, oh, God, we missed you so much, you know. Yeah. But I mean, all through my last probably you know, 45 years. I've been doing this 54 years with Tower of Power. Probably for 45 years, people have come to me and said, you know, my brother idolized you guys. You were his favorite band. He passed away last year. You know, can you guys put him in your prayer tonight or can you give him a shout out from the stage? And I try to do that whenever I'm asked. That's incredible. That's incredible. 
And uh, the last thing I, I have to ask you is, is about the future of Tower Power. Do you guys have any more shows planned? Do you guys have any more albums, uh, live albums coming out? Anything you're planning for the future that you want to share with us? We have plenty of shows booked, and yeah. we're booking all the time. We tour all the time. We go in and out. You know, we're not. Like we're, not, we're not at a big level like Mariah Carey or something. Where, <laughs> where you know I'm touring for the next seven months. You know, yeah. I mean, we we're always on tour. We go out for five days, we come home for three. We go out for two weeks, come home for ten. You know, we're just in out in out two hundred days a year. You know? Fantastic. And uh, so yeah, we got plenty of gigs. But right now we're doing a Christmas album. Oh, fantastic! We have never done one, and our manager uh, Ivy Daniel he said you guys uh, you need to do a Christmas. Oh, that's going to be great. Before it's all over, you got to do a Christmas right here. And, that means, <laughs> you know, and so we started that. recording, and uh, I'm doing my records. And the last three I've done with Joe Vanilli, and so he's a great producer, and we produce the records together, and high quality work. And uh, we've already done, we think, eight tracks. Fantastic. And we're going back in in about a week and a half, and I'll be there seven days. We'll be bringing back on vocals and Incredible, yeah. and vocals and guitar. And you know, so we just, whenever we have a, a period of time, we go in and we attack it, you know. Fantastic. And then um, we're planning a, a celebration of 55 years, you know. Oh, we wow. we celebrated 50, which was huge. Yeah. We did 40, <laughs> and then we did a big one, 50, where we had a 10-piece string section and two extra background singers yeah. and <laughs> extra guys from the past playing with us, seven-piece horn section, and that was great. But now, you know, we're like, we just celebrated 54 years, and we're like, you know, Dave Garrett White said, I think we should do a party next year. You yeah, know? for and sure. I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, we probably should, you know. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the manager says, I think from now on, you, sh you need to do one every year. <laughs> you know? and I'm like, well, whatever, man, I'm good with that. So we're planning on the one for the 55th. Fantastic. And then I think we're just going to start doing every year to a party. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's and fantastic. We'll film it. And, oh, know, fantastic. Yeah. Well, I know people are going to be happy to hear about that, and uh, I just want to thank you for this incredible, incredible opportunity to, to interview you, sir. Uh, I can't wait. Sold out crowd. Can you believe that tonight? It's sold yeah, out. Happy about that. It's going to be. It's going to be an amazing show. So, anyways, thank you very much for being on my show. Thanks for Have having me. Have a great me. show. I'm a big fan of the New so Mexico. You know. Yeah. We used to tour Farmington, Las Cruces, yeah. you know, Santa Fe, Albuquerque, all over New Mexico. We used to go regularly in the '70s. Yeah. It was kind of a disappointment for me in the 80s. We weren't coming here much, and now we come here a little more often. But uh, I love it here. Yeah, and when we love you. We love you guys. Well, so thank it. you so much, and that's it, guys. Stay tuned for more.